I'd like to talk about economic inequality today, uh, and in particular, uh, how people perceive inequality, the level of inequality in their society, how it's changed over time. Uh, there are many theories in political science and economics about uh, why economic inequality matters. People have argued that it leads to a number of serious uh, political consequences. For instance, uh, when economic inequality is high, uh, some people say that makes revolution more likely because the mass of the poor uh, has a stronger incentive to rise up and expropriate the rich. There's also an argument that in democracies, uh, the higher is the level of economic inequality, uh, the uh, greater will be the demand by the majority for redistributive programs for social policies, social programs that tax the rich in order to benefit the poor. And of course, uh, the rich are aware of this logic and in authoritarian uh, countries in which the elite dominates, uh, some people have argued democratization is going to be less likely if the rate, uh, the level of economic inequality is high because uh, the rich will have more to lose uh, if the uh, mass of the voters gets to decide on the tax rates uh, and we'll be able to uh, tax them, or we'll have an incentive to tax them uh, at very high rates. So these, these arguments have been around since Aristotle, uh, various later uh, political theorists uh, through Marx uh, and more modern uh, political scientists have, have developed these arguments. Uh, they've been formalized by economists recently and uh, they all seem quite plausible. They all make sense. Uh, one might very naturally expect that when economic inequality is high, uh, there would be these various uh, consequences. But uh, each of these theories, if you think about it, uh, makes one crucial assumption. And that is that people know how high uh, economic inequality actually is. Uh, if uh, the argument is that uh, the peasants uh, will rise up against the lords and uh, take over their castles, uh, stage a revolution because of high economic inequality. Well, the peasants have to know how high inequality is uh, in order to, to, to understand that incentive. So together with a colleague uh, from the Higher School of Economics in, in Moscow called Vladimir Gimpelson, uh, a couple of years ago, uh, I decided to try and look for evidence uh, about this question. Do people uh, in general know how high inequality is in their society? Do they know where they individually fit within the distribution of income? Uh, do they know how inequality has been changing in recent times? Uh, and uh, so we looked at a large number of uh, international surveys. Uh, I think it was nine surveys in all. Uh, all the surveys we could find which uh, had some information about what people really believed about the level of inequality or how it was changing uh, in their society. And what we found uh, was quite surprising. Uh, overwhelmingly, uh, it turned out that people had very little uh, correct information about uh, the level of inequality. So we would uh, look at questions which asked about some aspect of inequality, and then we would compare the answers that people gave in different countries to the best uh, estimates of statisticians about the real level of economic inequality in those same countries. For instance, there was one survey, the ISSP, which asked a question uh, which was based on a series of diagrams. So uh, they showed the respondents uh, diagrams which ranged from uh, a very steep pyramid representing a very unequal uh, distribution of, of income or wealth in society to a diamond shape or even an upside down pyramid where there are more rich people than poor people. And the question asked people, uh, asked the respondents, uh, which of these diagrams do you think is closest uh, to your own society, or best describes, best fits your own society. And so people chose one of those diagrams. We did some calculations to estimate which of those diagrams, under certain assumptions, actually was closest to the distribution in, in their society. And uh, it turned out uh, that people were 
uh, we're, we're guessing the correct answer, or choosing the correct diagram, uh, only slightly more often than they would choosing randomly across the five options. Uh, so they were doing only slightly better than chance. We looked at a, a whole series of other questions. We, there were questions about how high they thought the poverty level was in their society. It turned out that a very large number of people in many countries uh, were more than 10 percentage points off. Uh, so the level of poverty at that time in the European Union countries ranged from about 9% of the population to 27%. So if you're more than 10 percentage points away from the right value, that's a pretty big mistake. And many people, many, many people uh, were making large mistakes like that. Other questions were about do people uh, know how the trend uh, is going in inequality, whether inequality is increasing or decreasing. It turned out that people, uh, again, uh, did very little only very slightly better than chance, if better than chance at all, in guessing whether inequality had been increasing or decreasing or, staying, or had stayed the same in their country during the previous five years. So uh, a large amount of evidence suggests that people really don't know how high the level of inequality is. And if they don't know it today, when there's the most developed media, the most uh, advanced statistical services that the world has ever had, uh, it, it seemed to us unlikely that people had much better information about this in the 19th century, for instance, when democratization was happening, when many revolutions occurred. So, uh, in fact, uh, we also uh, look to see whether uh, perceptions of inequality uh, were related to these various things like revolutions and democratization. And of course, we couldn't test this uh, as, as uh, neatly as obviously one would like. But on the same surveys, there were questions about whether people thought uh, that there should be more redistribution by the government, for instance. Remember, one of the theories is that if economic inequality is high in a democracy, uh, there should be greater demand for redistribution. Well, it turned out that where people thought economic inequality was high in the country, whether or not it actually was, and often it wasn't, but when they thought it was high, demand for redistribution uh, was higher. When they thought it was low, demand for redistribution was lower. So there was a correlation between people's perception of inequality and their demand for income redistribution, but there was no correlation between the actual level of uh, income inequality and the demand for redistribution. And again, there, it, it, on, on the question of conflict, uh, political violence. So there was a question in the survey which asked uh, how, how serious are tensions between the rich and poor in your society? Well, when people believed that economic inequality was very high, they also perceived more tension between rich and poor uh, than if they thought uh, the level of inequality was low. Again, that relationship was much stronger than the relationship between the actual level of inequality. So we concluded from this that uh, people really don't know uh, very much about uh, the level of inequality in their society. That shouldn't be so surprising because it turns out from other literature that people don't know lots of things. And in a sense, I, I, I would be very surprised if they did know uh, the exact level of inequality or even how the level of inequality in their country compared to that in neighboring countries. Uh, that's a, a piece of information that you wouldn't expect many people to know. Uh, people also don't know things like the unemployment rate, uh, the inflation rate, even the rate of growth. So why would they know about inequality? Uh, so it makes sense, but it casts doubt on these uh, big explanations uh, for these historical changes, these things like revolutions, uh, democratization paths, and so on. Uh, if people if the perceptions are what really matter, then maybe uh, revolutions are caused by perceptions of high inequality rather than actual uh, high inequality. And maybe we need to rethink those theories and reframe them as being essentially theories about perceptions of inequality. So all of this raises the question, why do people uh, misperceive inequality? Why do some people think that inequality is really high when actually it isn't? Because it's not just that people uh, don't know, it's very often that people think something which simply isn't true. 
Uh, and we want to in investigate this in, in future uh, work. Uh, we'll have various ideas about this. Uh, one possibility is that it has to do with ideology, that people on the left tend to imagine that inequality is very high, people on the right uh, tend to imagine that it's low. Uh, so it might be a kind of uh, political bias like that. Another possibility is that it has to do with what people see around them. Uh, so people compare to their reference group, whether that's the people who live nearby uh, or the people within their profession, let's say. Uh, if people live in a rural community where everybody live, lives in a similar type of house, maybe they'll think that inequality is quite low. If they live in a big city where they see people driving Rolls Royces and living in very glamorous apartments and other people homeless, maybe they'll think that inequality uh, is really high. Uh, and, and so in that case, uh, people would be making the mistake of generalizing uh, from what they see around them to the whole country rather than realizing that what they see is, is not a representative sample of, of the whole country's uh, income situation. So those are two possibilities. There are various other thoughts we have about why people might misperceive and what, what type of people might uh, uh, make the biggest uh, errors in estimating or, or might uh, have the uh, beliefs that are furthest from the truth about the level of inequality. And we hope to uh, be able to sort through those possible explanations in future work.